Okay, so here I'm back with just another video relating to my ESP32 adventures. And this is a bit of a, uh, well, you, it seems like I'm doing more experiments with HTML than I'm actually doing with the ESP32, but because obviously it's got the web server built in and you can like, you know, get it to pass various URLs, it's a bit like developing back in the PHP days, you know, where you work out different ways of getting information onto the page. So what's happened is, um, uh, basically I've been, one problem that I had with this current page as it is at the moment, is that um, what I realized is that the, well, two reasons a page takes a long time to load is A, it's because of the um, image is the main thing. But the other thing of course is the jQuery so what I realized is that if I wanted to have multiple pages, I'll, I would need to load the jQuery multiple times. And I realized that that would be a big problem. So what I knew I needed to have a way of having a single page. So only jQuery is only loaded once. And then you can have multiple pages which load from that same jQuery. So this is the current page which is in the um, ESP32 at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I have a new, some more code here that I've done, which is for like a single page. And what I basically had to do is I had to get, I looked, I couldn't find an easy way of doing it. I either had to get some complicated, um, uh, what is it? Uh, JavaScript file, which you had to go through some rigmarole to get the pages up. And then the other thing I found was a, um, I found like a, um, I was, well, I? I'm just thinking if I show you where the, let me see if I can find it. Um, so. Yeah, see, here's the thing. So, so try and do a search for like jQuery. You think that you'd be easy to find. Single page. All right, let's do application. And so we have this one. So this, I think this is the one I found. And then when you go here, it's like, see, so you notice they close the question because you know what it's like at Stack Overflow. They're, they're very stingy there where even though the question's valid, some of these Stack Overflow people, they show a bit of hate to people who ask basic questions. So they, so they, so they try to close it, but they didn't delete it. So what I found was this guide B, which they said was the, um, was it this one? Well, this is the thing. They said B was the best one. But when I went to B, is, um, yeah, the way he did it, right, yeah, it was a bit complicated because he's defining roots and I couldn't quite understand the way he was doing it. So in the end, the one I went for was this, um, first one which is with handlebars and the thing is is obviously this the what he's produced is very impressive but it's actually there's too much in it see look this is too complicated this is the page you get and it's too complicated so in the end what i did i took all of his code here and then i just stripped out all the bits i didn't need and i ended up with just a, some simple let me just change that format. Uh, yeah, so all I did in the end was that there's a load of, yeah, this is it. So all of his HTML, I basically reduce it down to this, these functions basically. And so each of these functions here is for each page. And then you just have at the end, you just, you know, so this is it. So all these loads of code that he had on that page, I just reduced it down to these few lines and um, using jQuery, of course. And then the HTML, I, t I took out all these complicated HTML and just reduced it down to these few headers where basically, sorry, at the top, you see it's got front page, page. So that's the front page. And this is the... So this is for the MBS, this is for something I'm doing later on. 
And then finally, this is for the ADC. And then there's an the error page. So I had to actually manually strip all of the extra stuff he had in out just to get a simple, you know, multiple pages. And I couldn't find anyone who'd done it simply. So I suppose if you want uh, a sort of an easy way of doing a single page, then I suppose my code must be the easiest code you can use. But anyway, um, let's get on with this. So, so this web page is called web page single dot h. So all I have to do is go in here and just change the header. And let's just add another one just to, just so I don't lose, lose my place. <coughs> Cause it's just so so that in case I in case I want to change to one of the other ones, then it just makes it easier keeping them as um as comments. All right, so I'm going to include the web page single dot h. So let's build that. All right, so so we're just going to just upload this to the. And, and of course it's going to be a little bit bigger because I haven't gzipped it. Okay, so that's up. So now we're just going to just going to reset it the hard way. And um, well, I'm not going to bother with the make monitor because it's only the page we're after. This isn't really a programming exercise. So if I try and reload the page now, and of course because so because I haven't gzipped it, it's going to take a little bit longer. Uh, than if it was geezer. Yeah, I should have noticed this. It's for some reason when you sometimes after you reset it, the first time you try to load the page, it takes really long. Yeah, I don't know. Something seems maybe there's something I need to change because I've noticed that if you then reload it, sometimes it seems to come in quicker. Yeah, see. You see, it loads. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure what's causing that. Why? The first page. They, they, there must be some some thing I've done wrong programming wise, or probably I haven't allocated enough memory. And I've just noticed that the after a reset, the first time it loads, it's just um a bit slow. Right. So this is the new uh, page, and so as you can see, it's just the same as before, but I've just got some links at the top. And so now here's the um, interesting part, and hopefully it works since it's the first time I've tried this. Right, so there you have it. So now it produces the next page, and all without having to go back to the um, ESP32 and drag all of that page there again. And so then we've got the next page, which is so sort of the analog. And so as you see, Obviously, each of the pages are like stored in the DOM, and then as you select each uh, link, it um, it will produce. Um, I just want to check something because this is a bit. I didn't test this properly. Um, why is it so wide? Hmm. No, I just thought it'd be thinner. That's all, but um. Anyway, that's strange. I suppose, oh, I think I know what's wrong. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. So, so the, yeah. So there we have the um, uh, the different pages that come up, and you can just basically switch between them as you want. And of course, the the usual stuff still works. So uh, we can get our text, and then we can toggle the LED, which is really bright. Yeah, um, and then when we let me switch, yes, he still stores the DOM as as how it is. So all the changes that are made in the DOM, they actually, um, they they will actually uh, stay the. Yeah, stay the same. And you see, it's trying to read this ADC value. Now, you probably think that 
that that's just a fake value but let me just change the adc I'm just going to change so i've got a little potentiometer that i've got attached so i'm just going to change the value because because some of you might think that's just a fake um but, but here's the interesting thing is that this doesn't work while the wi-fi is on so to get the new value i have to actually reset it all right so sometimes it's a bit difficult to get it up because it'll it'll brown out and so all right so i managed to get it back up eventually so now if i refresh this page it will ask for the actual that same um sort of hash so if i reload it so obviously it has to get the whole page you know the first yeah so the first time it loads it has to get the whole page and so as you see it's well 2447 it doesn't change much um okay so I reset it so now let's see if i can get a different value all right yeah so there you have it so now the value's changed so the potentiometer is is, is it's actually reading a real value from the potentiometer because before it was um 2447 so now it's 2172 but like i say i can't get that to change while the wireless is on so i'm like working on some ways around that to see if you know what, what i can do about that and so yeah so we're still have the different pages which load obviously will load straight away so without straining the esp and they still work like usual and also um as you see the styling's a bit a bit a bit yucky as well so i'm just gonna just gonna drop a bit of um it's just gonna drop a piece of css in and just see what that what that looks like to, just to show that this is happening from the um it's the actual code that i'm updating that that sort of makes this difference all right so, so we added that in so we're just going to rebuild it and you see that's the th that's the thing about doing it this way with the header file is, is that it makes it so much easier to just do updates because you can get the css and check it in firefox and then you, once you change it in firefox you just copy it out of of firefox and then you just basically paste it straight into your into your header file because it's just it's just the same old html and so what once if i mean this obviously this is much better than actually trying to um you know the way i see people doing it on if you i mean just just do a search on on youtube for html in arduino web page arduino or esp32 and you look at some of the horrible ways in which people are uploading the or getting the html onto their um onto the esp32s or, or the arduinos and but doing it this way where it's just a you know it's just basically a a string and and it's just your html just plain as day so, so let's see so, so, all right so effectively we've done a little bit of development let's see how quickly we can make put that change into the um you know in, into this esp32 yeah and i think this this slow loading the first time is obviously some some bug i'm gonna have to try and work out what it is yeah see when you load the page the next time it's always quicker so you have it so there we have our updated uh button so that's the home that's an nbs our analog so it's still 2151 and so so there you have it so and so we have our multiple pages and of course we still got our text yeah and the reason you know the reason why i've got all these huge buttons it's actually because obviously i want it to work on the phone um so obviously to to be able to get the to work on a phone you have to make the buttons of a decent size 
Yeah, I've got to try and work out how to get this because I want it to go across, not down. But I'll I'll sort that out some other day. Right, so that's it. So basically, so one, what, what this shows is that you can have a single page um, HTML page which doesn't have to reload between the links, and also the, you've done try to do the code in a more simple way. So if you go onto the internet and find some of those unfortunate ones where you've got all these loads of code you have to type. I've like done the work to try and slim it down. And if, if, if anyone, what I want to do is I don't usually put the, the reason I don't, the code isn't up at the moment is simply not because I don't want to release it. It's just that I don't usually get comments on my videos. So if I suddenly find a few comments on there saying, yeah, give us the code, give us the code, then of course I'll, I'll edit, I'll put it up on the, uh, page because it just takes a bit extra time to actually paste it into the you know into the page etc so if no one's going to leave any comments then you know it isn't really worth the time but if I get some comments and likes then yeah for sure I mean you know, typing a comment and clicking like that's that's like the easiest thing in the world for anyone to do to get some code as far as I can see okay thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video